Hello, welcome back to PlayStation Access. I'm Nathan, I'm here with Dave. Hello. Dave, we're still at E3, obviously. Yeah. Uh, it's in the morning on the last day, uh, but we have been to see on a previous day, Vampire. Yeah. Uh, which is a new kind of uh, London set RPG from uh, Don't Nod, which uh, the, the guys you might have already played their games on PlayStation. This looks very different. And so we have some gameplay, first of all, but also a list of seven reasons that we're excited. Yes, I love these lists. And also, I must admit, this is a game I didn't, previously know anything about. No, me, that's uh, why I made an appointment to see it. And the uh, presentation was very in-depth, very long. We saw a, lots of cool gameplay. We saw about so. 45 minutes of gameplay, uh, some of which is kind of sp same area, sprinkled on this video. So let's get yeah. cracking. Number one is just the setting. Um, and actually, weirdly, we were at Focus Interactive, um, which, who's publishing this game, uh, for a whole morning. And they have lots of games set in this kind of milieu, right? Do, which yeah. is like a uh, gloomy, hammer, hom hammer horror style uh, London. Yes. Foggy streets. Yes. Cobbles. Yes. Historical, you know, sort of everyone's a bit sad times. Yeah, exactly. Not a good fantasy setting. Uh, yeah. I guess if you think about uh, Bloodborne, but maybe 100 years in the future, even though that's a completely different universe, yes. you've kind of got, I think it's 1890s, you know, this is kind of the London of, I guess you would say, uh, Jack the Ripper, or, you know, it's yeah. very much a kind of a gothic... Uh, London from yes. those kind of from that literary landscape definitely uh, which uh, which I'm excited about yeah so number two the protagonist right Dr. Jonathan Reed yeah and this is uh, interesting isn't it because it's a game about a vampire it's also a game about a doctor and those yep. two things are almost diametrically ah, opposed aren't they and that feeds into something we'll be talking about a bit later on but right. yeah so he has become infected I, and I guess the other thing about the setting is that the idea is there's a few kind of bits and pieces coming together within London um, and one of them is the kind of the Spanish flu so there's yes. a, a population kind of under uh, you know stress yeah. and he, he genuinely wants to help but he also has to eat people now so yes, that's, so that's which difficult can for be, him. you know, a bit of a problem, but it, that all feeds into gameplay. I yeah. don't know. I don't want to step on your toes now. No, exactly. I know, I know. It's, you're that, restrained so. in what you can say, but yeah. well, what we could say is that um, he finds himself. Um, he's being kind of uh, helped by another doctor. So yes. he's in a, in a kind of a hospital, an asylum sort of place. No, it's a hospital, but there are, and, and that's sacrosanct ground. So he can't, so he can't be touched on that ground. But there's like a guard. I can't. I, let me find the name while you fill. Yeah. So basically. Uh, as Nate says, you know, vampires are bad and not liked by people, but this doctor uh, has found another doctor who... Pembroke Hospital it is, and, right. and, and the guard of people who are like vampire hunters in London, they're called the Guard of Prewen. Yes. And there's a man called McCullum who hates you. Yes, And you does. can see him now on the video. Yeah, um, and he's a, he's a vampire hunter. There's a group of vampire hunters. But your doctor friend who runs the hospital yeah. recognises that you are a doctor and you are useful His in name this time is of need. Dr. Swansea, yeah. And so it, he sort of agrees to protect you yeah. um, within the hospital if you kind Help of do him. his bidding And he's try I think he's try ostensibly trying to do good, but it's yeah. a shady deal that he's made there, this, this other doctor. Yes. So who knows and what he's... And he's very eccentric. Yeah, he, I mean, he's hiding a vampire in a hospital in London. That's so. true. <laughs> yeah. um, so anyway, so yeah, we're talking about the kind of the light and shade of your character, and that does play into number three, which is the semi-open world. Yes. And there are different... So this London is broken down into various explorable districts. Yes. Uh, I was really excited about this, actually. I, was, I just loved watching them run around London. You can tell... There's loads of nooks and crannies, yeah. loads, loads of character as well, because it's not just a full open world. They've really worked hard on these on these smaller areas, yeah. Um, and you know, it's the sort of thing that you're going to get to know. You're going to come to know your way around. Well, and the other interesting thing that it plays into the reason that because you might be thinking, I would like an open world, but the yeah. reason is because each district within London has a kind of a health rating sort of. Um, they can they can go from that, and each one has a set, like a set population of citizens, yeah, which you can get to know and learn about. Uh, and so you're, and you, the idea of you being a, both a doctor and a predator, then comes, you know, into this idea that you're, you want to learn about these people, maybe help the good ones, and then maybe make other decisions about, the, you know, the other ones. It's actually, uh, it's hard to explain. It's an extremely uh, well balanced kind of system mm. of, uh, and yeah, as you say, you're going to actually be learning about all the NPCs in each of the districts or you, yeah. you should There's like do. a chart and you can kind you're, of... You're going to find out about their relationships with one another. Yeah, um, how they rely on each other. And the number of them that there are, you might see where I'm going with this, uh, it has uh, kind of implications for the economy of that area, which yes. has implications for their health. Exactly. Which also has implications for the quality of their blood. Right. So it's, it's a really delicately well, balanced Well, actually, that does get onto number number four is just straight up the sacrificing system. Yes. Which is at the core of the game because you are a vampire. So you, 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 are, you have a flock 
but then every now and again you have like a lamb chop. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, that's, that's I certainly do. Maybe a way to think about it. So there are you investigate. There are dialogue trees, and you can use some powers, which we might talk about a, a bit later on, to find out more about, as Dave said, the kind of relationships that these people have with each other. So in the um, this isn't on this video, I don't think that we can show you, but in the gameplay that we saw, there was uh, a horrible murderous son. He yeah. was living with his mum, and his dear old mum loved him, but also took care of like a local youth. Yeah. And the guy was jealous of the, his like, you know, uh, I, what would you call him? Like a foster brother. A foster brother, yeah. But that guy relied completely on the mum, and the mum didn't want to give the other guy up. And so it was like this triangle of like interrelationships. But each one of these people has literally a bar which shows you how much XP you'll get for eating them. So this is the this is the interesting thing, isn't it? Is why would you want to eat people? Obviously you're a vampire, but you're a doctor, so you, yeah. you don't want to. But for gameplay reasons, <laughs> yeah, sucking to. the blood of the innocent citizens is the what the I well, think it's the, the way best to get way more powerful. Is to get more to get more it's, powerful. It's much quicker than like fighting. They made that point. You, yes. This is really the best way to level up and then achieve greater good. Potentially. So the, 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 sort of, the reason we saw them doing it in the demo is they knew that they had like a boss battle basically coming up. Yeah, had and to get they were under leveled, and so in order to do this boss ba battle, really effectively or be guaranteed to do it, they needed to level up their skills, which meant sacrificing a citizen. Yeah. Uh, but also the reason, the idea is that you don't want to sacrifice just anybody, and you don't, you know, you, you can, need to you know. You can plan and, and plot and you, make you conscious want to be decisions. sure that you're, the, the innocent person you're taking away isn't going to, like, you know, ruin the kind of balance of this area. So it area. might be that you can kill a bad person, but that might actually have bigger consequences for the area than if you just knocked off some old lady. So they want you so. to investigate these citizens, and there's loads yeah. of little side, side quests which are following their stories and finding out about them, which in turn also gives you XP. So Dave, and do you know what? I'm just going to drop this in here because it's to do with the moral conundrum of this and in the b-roll which wasn't on the gameplay he right. meets a priest who is refused he's become he's been infected he's a vampire but oh, he's right. refusing to eat people he's right. only feeding on the dead and he's like rotting away oh god and i just thought that was like you know like a sort of a mirror image of the doctor in a way and just another way that that kind of story could play out of, yeah. of trying to make good vampire decisions i wonder if there's a trophy for that you know don't, don't suck eat anyone's nobody. blood yeah level one bros <laughs> um, and uh, well the other thing i really like about sacrificing system is because it is because this is a game about learning stuff when you uh, when you I, I think it might be called embracing in the game but anyway when you uh, eat them uh, you gain all of their memories that's right everything yes. they know you now know so it might yes. be that you have to find something out and you can't figure out another way to do it you just eat that dude yeah it's a very <laughs> smart system and like uh, we, we we were like we said had a big presentation and, and the sort of ramifications were becoming clear as we were yeah. watching the game. It, it kind of it was it's a really nice little package that was unfolding, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to move on to number six, Dave, which is just combat. Yeah, there is some. Uh, in in contrast to the kind of the sophisticated uh, morality morality system, mm. um, the violence is also good and it's a mix of uh, melee, ranged, and vampire skills. Yes. So you have like a gun that you can pull out yep. and kind of interrupt combos with. Um, you, you, there is obviously like a big skill tree which I get onto in a second, so you can kind of spec yourself in different ways and yeah. unlock combat abilities and also vampire abilities, yes. which are to do with your blood meter. Yes, right. So blood is a, so you've got a, a, a stamina meter, which health, is for, stamina, and then a blood meter, which yep. is uh, obviously you have to replenish by sucking blood or I think in combat you well you can take out enemies in certain ways to get their blood can't yeah you? so you can like you know keep your blood up during a during yeah. a fight and keep your pow most powerful moves coming uh, the combat looks smart there's some there is a bit of it uh, on here and uh, it's one of them things because it's got those three layers it's yeah. quite hard to see how they'll all chain together um, it's intriguing I'd like to know what kind of combos you can string out and uh, it, it, it certainly seemed more complex than you know you might think considering it, the rest of the game is quite complex it looked like yeah. the combat was going to be quite fun and, I mean, it, and it, you have a lot of choices it didn't remind me of this game I'm about to mention in any other way particularly but that that layer of uh, melee ranged and then kind of magic abilities did remind me of The Witcher a little bit right. and I was kind of thinking you know like just trying to compare it to that in my mind as I was watching it so you try and compare everything to The Witcher it's also true so. um, and finally yeah I'm just going to mention the vampire skills just as a yeah. final one because they run through the game and they can be stuff like you can just kind of blink from one place to another yeah. like very fast kind of dashing and you disappear in a sort of a, a haze of uh, darkness. Yeah. Um, you can also use, I don't know what their name for it is, but it's like a vampire vision. 
and the, that's right yeah the world goes dark there was uh, and actually this did make me think a little bit like the, the witcher as well you know we saw sort of yeah. investigation skills using a vampire sense yes to track people obviously particularly tracking blood I, and I things like, like, like the that. visual effect of it man because like, the world goes dark but the every all of the blood it becomes incredibly vibrant Yes. The reds become really deep and kind of Yeah, it lurid. plays into the kind of narrative of the game really, really well. And I, I yeah. just like being a detective. Like, I love that in games anyway. And just there is a feeling bit, like big I'm... De- detective element. There is a... De- well, yeah, and like we said, like, particularly with just finding out about the uh, the citizens in yeah. the world, like, you're, you're going quite hardcore PI on them. Well, and talking about that, one of the, the other vampire, the ways that you can kind of use your supernatural abilities, mesmerise, which unlocks yeah. more dialogue options so you can ask about more things when yeah. you're in conversation with people and then just have your... Because I think that, you know, like knowing stuff is quite a powerful element to this game yeah. um, and making the right decisions in each district. Um, and, oh, I think there's one more that I've got written down here. Oh, yeah, just one thing that the, um, the developers mentioned as they were showcasing it to us uh, was that there was one point when Dave mentioned that you could kind of stun somebody and then suck their blood during yep. a fight. You can spec that differently. So he was saying, right. I've done it so that I replenish all of my blood. But you can spec it just so it does loads of damage to them yeah. at the same time. So you can obviously kind of manage your build in that way and use your supernatural abilities in various ways. And it just seems like, I mean, when I first saw the trailer, I was, I don't, I don't, not that I'm over vampires, but just the constant need to kill p- innocent people yeah. is something which I was like, eh. And yeah. then after I saw the gameplay and the decisions involved seemed to be arranged quite smartly, I was like, uh-huh. Like we said, I, or like I said, it, it was a long presentation, so and it like it slowly unfurled like for me. Like as yeah. I was watching it, I was like, oh, this is much, this is much deeper, much more interesting than I. And you don't get that it. from a trailer, do you? No, and you don't get that from a trailer. Hopefully, you've got it from this video. There's two more things I just wanted to say, which yep. is that. Uh, you need your vamp- some of your vampire abilities to get to certain locations so yes. obviously things are going to unlock stuff. for you and you're yeah. going to be returning to districts and stuff and also just something that I really liked is that they've stuck to the idea that a vampire has to be invited in so yeah, when man. he went to see the mum that you talked about yeah. um, she was at the door she was like who, who, who's this and he had to try and he had to do a bit of mesmerizing. Yeah. he couldn't just go into her house or no. you know just, it'd, be, it'd, be just cool, that was really cool. it'd be cool to see which kind of other elements they, they bring in. Exactly, yeah. I just thought that was really great. So that is why we're excited about Vampire. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay and our talking about it. Let us know in the comments below what you thought. Do like this video if you enjoyed it. Stay tuned to Access. We've still got loads more coming up from E3.